Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Civil Engineering Academy. My name's Cody. Let's go ahead and get started here. So we have a problem here, and it talks about uh, ropes being pulled on a hook, and it wants us to find the magnitude and the direction. Uh, and basically what that means is it wants us to find the, uh, the resultant force and the, uh, the angle that it acts on. So uh, it gives us four options there, and then it gives us a diagram. So we're going to go ahead and solve it. So the first thing that we need to ask ourselves is uh, what, what kind of game plan are, do we have for this? So uh, we obviously have, you know, forces and, and angles. Uh, we're going to have to break that down in order to solve for the resultant force. So we're going to break that down into vectors. All right. So we're going to go ahead and uh, dive in here. We're going to go ahead and call this one F1. And we're going to call this one F2. And we're going to call this one F3. Okay. So for F1, F1, we have um, 4 kilonewtons and only the along the X axis. So it does not have a, uh, a Y. Contributing to its force, right? So it's only going to be four comma zero, right? Because it's four along the x and nothing along the y. Okay. For F two, we have five kilonewtons, but this time it actually does have a Y contributing to it as well as an X. So we're going to have to solve for that. So what we have to do is we have to do our, uh, we have to use sine, cosine, and tangent. Uh, we don't have to use tangent in this case, but we will have to use sine and cosine. So let's go ahead and get started with cosine. Uh, if you don't remember, what I'm about to do is some voodoo magic, and then I'll explain it here in a minute. So we've got five kilonewtons. Uh, times the cosine of 45. Okay, and where this equation comes from, uh, if you remember correctly here, we have saw, ka, toa, right? And uh, this is sine is opposite over uh, hypotenuse. Okay. And then we have cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And then we have tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay, so uh, what I just did is I did the five kilonewtons, which is my hypotenuse and cosine, that guy, and I just um, sent it over to the other side. So I multiplied the cosine of 45 times the hypotenuse to solve for my adjacent. So I'll go ahead and explain that here, just in case I did the hypotenuse times the cosine of 45 degrees that's what we're dealing with equals the adjacent force that's what I did so go ahead and plug that into your calculator and uh, your FE or PE approved calculator and go ahead and get an answer I ended up with 3.53 3.54 uh, it looks like I wrote down 3.53, so we're going to go with that. So a good tip for the future, uh, this has a 45 degree angle to it, and that forms a uh, pretty good triangle to where this Y and this X is the same thing if this is 45 degrees. Just a good tip. So in that case, that means the Y is going to be 3.532, but we're going to go ahead and solve for it. Uh, 
just to prove it to you. Plug it in. 3.53. So that just proves that uh, any any force with a 45 degree angle acting uh, with it, your X and your Y's are going to be the same. Uh, that, uh, that'll save you, you know, a couple minutes on your exam, which could be crucial. Let's, uh, we just solved F2. So this one is 3.53 kilonewtons and 3.53 kilonewtons. Okay. F3. F3 we have um, we have eight kilonewtons, but it's kind of a tricky one, right? It's it's got two angles acting with it. Uh, we've got 45 degrees plus 60 degrees, and I just basically solved the hint right there. You add them. You, you've got 45 and 60, so you just add them, and you end up with 105 um, as your angle. What we're going to go ahead and do? Let's go ahead and do uh, 45 degrees plus 60 degrees and that equals 105 degrees and we're going to go ahead and do the cosine and the sine again I encourage you to pause this video do it yourself and check yourself to see if uh, if you got it right all right is that what you got uh, 2 minus 207 and positive 773 uh, this would be a good time for you to check yourself so let's go ahead and do minus 2.07 and 7.73 Three. Does this make sense? Right? We have, uh, we can kind of look here. We know that it's in the negative direction, right? And the positive y. So that does make sense. So we can move on. How in the world are we going to get a resultant force with this? I'm glad you asked. It's very easy. You just add them up. Very, very easy. So you're going to add F1 plus F2 plus F3 equals, and you add all the X's together, so you get 5.46 and 11.26 for your X's and your Y's, but that's not necessarily your uh, resultant force, that's the location at where it is. We still need to figure out the magnitude of it, right? And so to find the magnitude, we just need to think about a triangle. You need to think about a triangle. In this case, this is your F R, right? And then this is your uh, your Y and your X. So that looks awfully familiar to the Pythagorean theorem, and that's exactly what we're going to do to to solve for this. So you're your a squared plus your b squared equals your c squared and in this case your c squared is your force resultant so what we're going to go ahead and do is we have r squared is equal to 5.46 squared plus 11.26 squared your r is equal to 12.5 that's your resultant force kilonewton so now we have to find um, the angle, right? We, ha we have an answer here. So there's our first answer. It asked for our, uh, our magnitude, I believe. Yeah, the magnitude and the direction. So now we have to find the direction of this problem. So the way we do that is we use our sine, cosine, tangent, right? We can use any of those, and it will give us the same answer, and I'm about to prove it to you. So we have a sine of theta is equal to, if you remember what sine is, it's uh, opposite over hypotenuse. So let me scoot up a little bit. Our opposite would be the 11.26 because that is our y. So 11.26 over our hypotenuse, which is 12.5. So the way this is solved is you have a, uh, a theta is equal to your sine inverse of 11.26 over 12.5. So I end up with 64.26, so that's good enough for 64.3 or 64 degrees. 
So our answer, our answers are, uh, they have two significant digits, so we're not even worried about it. We're just going to go ahead and skip to 64. And just for, uh, just for giggles here, I'm going to go ahead and solve cosine and tangent just to prove to you that, uh, that you can use any of them. You know, that any of them work just fine. All right, so there you have it. Uh, your theta is going to be 64 degrees and your resultant force is going to be 12.5. So your answer is going to be B.